Silent Chew was a bizarre webcomic found in 2007, made by a person known as Chris Chan, who was 25 at the time. But the comic was made three years prior, 2004, where Chris would have roughly been around 22-ish. However, the character was made in 2000 during a high school project because it wasn't technically copyrighted by the project standards. And Chris Chan ran with it for years after he graduated. That teacher never understood the abomination she unleashed. The concept was a crossover between Sonic the Hedgehog and Pokemon, with the title character being a mix of Sonic and Pikachu. While that concept may seem harmless, the creator, Christian Wesley Chandler, had an ugly background of racism, homophobia, and obsession over getting a girlfriend that leaked inside the comic. He also has autism that was very unchecked by his upbringing, and gave Christian a very bizarre view of reality. Christian has a very unhealthy attachment to his work. This isn't your typical high schooler making fan cares about the Sonic X screenshots. Chris Chan wanted this to be published, officially, and has been seeking to do so for over a decade now. And this all culminated in giving Chris Chan a very bizarre reputation on the internet. Despite not actually associating with the Sonic Recolor community, he was seen as the worst part of that niche side of the internet. So, Sonic Chu being a crossover, the plot at first focused on Sonic Chu and his friends, defeating Dr. Robotnik and Team Rocket, but that aspect is brushed off very early to make way for Chris, being more about Chris venting his revenge fantasies than being a simple crossover. The art is very terrible. It looks like a kindergartner drew it. And no, it does not get any better. But in a strange way, it does kind of give me some nostalgia. I remember making my own Pokemon fan characters and my own comments about them. The big difference is, I was 10 years old, and this guy's in his late 20s or 30s. The one positive thing he does do is type in the text, having some self-awareness that his handwriting could be very hard to read. The main characters of this comic include a fictionalized version of Chris Chan, where he's drawn a lot more thinner than he is in real life, as well as the title character, Sonichu, and his girlfriend, Rochu. Chris Chan in this comic is the mayor of Quickville, a city named after his initials, Chris and Wesley Chandler having the same ambition as a real Chris, and his never-ending quest to get a girlfriend. Chris himself has the ability to transform into a Sonic Chu, given by his Native American ancestors. Sonic Chu, oddly enough, is more of a side character. Originally, he was a Pikachu who collided with Sonic during the final boss of Sonic Adventure 1. So, I guess this would play Sonic Chu in the late 90s? During the collision, Sonic Chu creates a rainbow that hits a nearby Raichu turning her into a Rose Chu. We saw Sonic Chu with a bad design, and Rose Chu's even worse. She's literally just Amy with slightly different features. They pretty much look exactly the same. Also, Rose Chu has a trainer named Hell, but she's forgotten rather quickly. Eventually, Sonic Chu gets a dark clone called Black Sonic Chu, or also called Black Chu, or Black Chu, I don't know. He changed his name simply to Blake to sound less racist. He is a literal clone, but the reason he looks like Shadow the Hedgehog was because of a scientist accidentally spilling Coca-Cola in the DNA. Huh. The rainbow also spawned five Sonic Chu eggs, which gives birth to a Power Rangers-like group called the Chaotic Combo, each with different color and type. Wild Sonic Chu is brass, punchy Sonic Chu is fighting, Angelica is based on light, bubbles, water, you get the picture. However, out of all of them, it is Maggie Chan who has the most importance. He is the most utilized of the five because of his psychic powers. Practically being a force main character, he also uses these psychic powers to spy on gay people. Ironically, his love interest is Selvina Roshu, who is a gender fluid shapeshifter, and is the first gender neutral character in the cast, I suppose. He is trained by Mewtwo, who only really appears in his backstory. Another character of note is Bionic the Hedgehog, who is literally an orange sign. However, he is Christian's very first fan character he created, technically being a predecessor to Sonic Chu. He was conjured up after a student accidentally threw a basketball at his head in gym class. Now imagine if that never happened. There's also a DJ Sonic Chu hosting the city's radio station. And there's Patty, a character based on Christian's dead dog, who is the only original character in the cast. It is also where Chris breaks the fourth wall and reveals that Quickville is a dimension in his room. Mayor by day, lonely version by night. But then there are characters who are just outright forgettable. There's Darkspine, the parody of Link. 
and Flame the Sunbird, who only appears like twice apparently. So if all this sounds like the dumbest shit ever, well it gets even dumber. The main villain of the series is Mary Lee Walsh, who is based on the real life Mary Lee Walsh, the dean from his former college. He had such a hatred for her because she tore his love advertisement signs in, while also saying that you won't get a girlfriend this way or any other way. Chris has sworn revenge since. Now, one thing that's very odd about this character is that she's portrayed as an older woman with a Viking helmet. But because Christian's art is so terrible, some people confuse it for a short haired bob cut, which led to a really weird miscommunication where the internet portrayed her as a young woman that appears to be a succubus, most likely not knowing the real person behind it. I hope. Well, yeah, that's just pretty weird. To Horny Jail you go. But there were other villains like this. There's a minor villain character based on Chris Chan's cat professor, and there's also the jerk ops, who are based on the mall security removing Chris from the premises due to his love advertisement. I also think his hatred for the mall security extends to the justice system in general. The comic is also openly homophobic. There's a dark, mere counterpart of Chris, who originally was just meant to be Giovanni's son, but ends up being developed into a stereotypical gay caricature just to show how much Chris hates gay people. The more angry and gayer he gets, he turns into an evil Chris Chan. And there are also villains based on numerous trolls as they come and go. But the most petty grudge being Wesley Sonichu. Another girl Chris had feelings for was his childhood friend, who was put in the comic also having the ability to become a Sonichu furry like Chris. But she has a boyfriend, and he wrote him into the comic too as an evil hedgehog. It also led to this funny image. I actually heard somewhere that Sonichu was originally going to focus on this dynamic, having Chris transforming to Sonichu, with a childhood friend transforming to Rose Chu and the boyfriend transforming to Blake. But instead, he chose to go with what we see now. This is also done to the love interest, too. One of the more well known characters being Megan, who was his love interest in the early part of the comic. She was his only female friend at the time, but the friendship ended sour. Long story short, he drew porn of her. There are also multiple other different girlfriends he had throughout the comic too who turned out to be female trolls. So, okay, that's all the characters. Is there a plot? Um, I guess a little. The earlier issues are about introducing the many characters, despite, you know, the first issue already introducing many of the characters already. So, they just reintroduce them again. While having many adventures fighting Team Rocket, Merrily Walsh, or Blake Sonichi, Chris introduces another character named Crystal. She's not based on anyone in real life, but he has expressed wanting a daughter named Crystal. You see, I have a dream. I have my dream, and that dream is to give birth to uh, to have a do- to share a daughter with my with my wife, with my wife to be, and her name would be Crystal. A dream. As in, like, you were asleep and you saw something, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't think, I think Casey actually doesn't really like that name. You know, it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a stripper yeah. name, you know, Crystal. You know, it's, it's kind of like, no, kind of no, like no, Crystal, no. too. You know, like that. No, that no, no. Kind of it's, no it, would not, it, would not, it would not be Crystal. It would be Crystal. I just think he really likes the name. And let's not think about it any further. She gets captured in a mirror by Mary Lee Walsh. In order to save her, they need to find the seven Sonichu balls, which are like the Chaos Emeralds, sort of. Although the Chaos Emeralds are in the Sonichu universe, I mean, they could create Sonichu, but they can't free, uh, whatever, I'm thinking too much into it. There are seven Sonichu balls. Darkspine has a red and blue one in his possession. Magichan has possession the yellow one already. The white one is found in the past. While they return in the present, Chris Chan gets stuck in a time warp, as a response to the criticism of the comic being too focused on Chris. His character is absent for quite a while, bringing more focus on Sonichu, but it's very pointless since he does get some screen time and will make new characters to represent himself anyways. During his absence, Billy Mays becomes the new mayor of Quickville. It's some troll shit, they really love Billy Mays. And one of the more infamous episodes involves Sonichu going to 4chan to stop the Encyclopedia Dramatic page for spreading lies about Christian Weston Chan, with the creator of Chris's ED page, Jason Kendrick Howell, as the main villain of the day, along with his underage sex slave, based on a false allegation. 
Meanwhile, Wild Sonichu takes a page for Sala's sake and breaks into Fortune to get the light blue Sonic Pokeball. The chapter was also infamous for having a lot of, uh, fan service, where he traces over other hentai art set. But he also makes sure to let you know that the characters are all 18. For the most part. Oh no. And this also makes people question on what demographic Sonichu was intended for in the first place. And he's trying to get this published in Nintendo. Nintendo is a kid-friendly company. They don't like fan servers in their game. I do not know what point I'm trying to make here. The troll gets defeated when Rose Chu uses her super form to face Rainbow. And yes, it is considered to be her super form. Also, while Sonic Chu finds a Sonic Ball off screen, and that's much of the comic's focus for many of the issues. Separate adventures gain the Sonic Chu Ball to free Crystal from the mirror. In the meantime, the characters are fucking their brains out. You know, for a self-insert, Chris Chan is pretty lame. Typically, many Mary Sue's or Gary Sue's have their own love triangle or battle hero or something. Many of the girls he gets are based on real-life female trolls that never go anywhere. And it appears that he blames his lack of social skills on his autism, which his fan characters don't have. So, it's like punishing himself? There's even times where he gets jealous of his own side characters, which is just very weird. It's even acknowledged just how pathetic he is, while his own creations are the one having basic social skills. Or how he sings normal people act. Also, why is Angelica having premarital sex? Isn't she supposed to be a Christian? Oh, whatever. The purple ball is found in the mall, and the last green one is found in the Virginia Lake, which is quite anticlimactic in context. I almost missed it. Once all the Sanchez balls are found, the city goes into war. Merrily Walsh attacks, all the jerk off attack, all the evil Sonic Shoes attack, all the trolls attack, there's Transformers, crappy advertisement, devils, devil trolls, pants shitting, poorly drawn combat, and fucking walls of text. My god, Chris. They free Chris out of the time warp, and Chris makes a vaccine for homosexuality using his own blood. Also, he makes out with Meg for Family Guy, but surprise, is actually his future wife, though. <sighs> What the fuck, Chris? He defeats Mary Lee Walsh and Kyle Graduan once and for all with the power of Guitar Hero. What the fuck did I just read? The song he used is a parody song claiming that Power Rangers sucked after Zordon's deaths. Okay, bitch. Lost Galaxy was literally the best season of Power Rangers. I'm not gonna let some Sonic fan talk shit about my franchise. After the battle, Sonic and Rose Shoe's life get invaded by the paparazzi. Though it goes absolutely nowhere, and I think Chris only did it to draw weird sex scenes. And Rose Shoe on the toilet. Chris Chan and Sonic Chu use the seven balls to transform into their super form. Sonic Chu is just orange. I guess as a reference to Bionic being the predecessor, I guess. But what was Chris Chan for? He just looks like a homeless person doing a bad Sonic cosplay. What's up with the beard? Oh, and they free Crystal. So this sounds like a climactic end, right? Well, no, there's more. And it's gonna require a lot more context. You know that phrase, original character do not steal? Well, Chris likes to steal a lot. Some of the fan characters he uses in the comic were originally made by other people. One of the well-known examples being Spunky Skunk, who was originally made by Megan. And he still uses after their friendship went sour. And there's others like Jigalami, Blaze Bob, and Chloe Rose Chu, which were made by his many troll girlfriends. But the most infamous being Simon Chu, who was created by one of Chris's troll fans, Evan. But Chris made a Rule 63 version called Samoa Chu, who resembles Simon Chu a lot. And she falls in love with Lao Sana Chu. Now the guy involved in creating Simon Chu is associated with Asper Chu. A parody comic made by Alex Vance and Larry, meant to be a parody of Sonichu and many of the characters. He also takes a parody version of his characters, including the title character Asperchu, and cures them of their Asperger's and makes them, uh, normal I guess. Which is kind of strange considering the Asperchu Sonichus appear to be based on the classic Sonic. This trolling op does foreshadow many of Chris's views on fan characters that seem to escalate in recent years. They convinced Chris to kill Samoa Chu, and Chris did not take kindly to that at all. He brings her back as Sandy, Samoa's daughter, and while Sanchu trains her to become a child assassin. By the way, Soft Fan is a Pokemon item that you do stats. And yeah, there's many other instances where the main characters do some very disturbing actions. 
like where Sylvana pretends to be Blake in order to sleep with Bubbles, which is rape, I think. Now, I know she was a bad guy at the time, but she does get redeemed. Also, Chris did a similar thing when he met Casey during the liquid arc. And there's Chris Chan himself, whose recollection on real life events are just very shady, which is why this comic is so infamous. And it gets really disturbing when he kills the after two writers in his comic in very brutal ways. One of them gets killed by an electric chair, Chris Chan uses his psychic powers, yeah, by the way, he has psychic powers, to crush someone's bones. Alec is shot and killed by the supporting characters for how they were depicted in the Aspachu comic. And Evan gets killed by Sandy, who is a child. Sandy even collects a trophy like a psychopath. These are the heroes, by the way. You know that horror movie trope where a teacher shows a parent a disturbing drawing their kid drew? Well, this arc is kind of like that. And he even pulls this crap with Liquid Chris, too. So did you get the uh, comic pages I sent you? Yeah, um, I'm a little disturbed by the violence in it. You, you, you shot Chris. Only in the leg. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't chase after us. But that's, that's horrible! Are there fans who root for these characters? Well, that's a trick question, because they don't exist. Everyone looks down on Sonic Chu. No one ever talks about it in some ironic, positive light. And there's no one who's really engaged with the story. But you wouldn't think that with a comic like this, all the characters are really just that one note. So there's not really much to like. I'm sure the guy with no ears has a bigger fan base than any of these characters combined. And not only that, it's also very hard to read. And it's not by how sloppy it is. Mostly because many of these characters are based on real people with their own strange relationship with Chris. So, say you have no clue who Megan is, who Marilee Walsh is, or who the troll of the day is, you would feel kind of lost. It feels like getting into actual comics. But with a troll Wikipedia attached instead. And it definitely gets worse in the Aspachu arc. Like, there's a part where the Aspachu creators kept a bunch of rose shoes in their basement, now, I assume that's a thing in the Aspachu comic, I have no clue. I don't have the full context. There's numerous fan comics from the 2000s with poor art and odd concepts, but they managed to get a decent sized audience and just look past their flaws. If there's fans making a TV trolls page, then they did something right. And I'm sure even the Lightbringer has a bigger fan base than Sonic U. Even Bloodshot has more fans. And that's not saying much. One very odd fixation I noticed about Chris Chan is his reminiscence of high school, where apparently he had the better social standing than he does as an adult. The real villain on the comic in charge of all the jerk off and Mary Lee Walls is Count Graduate, based, of course, on graduation from high school. Chris Chan was in his late 20s when he wrote this comic, though it's still pretty strange and kind of sad. While the comic itself is a very nonsensical mess, Sonichu, if anything, is just another look into the weird mindset of Chris Chan himself. And it doesn't get any better. Now that was the Sonichu people remember. How is it now? In part 2, I look at the modern Sonichu comics. Hope to see you soon.